There are few debates in America today that divide people more than school reopenings. Parents rightfully cracking under the pressure of playing full-time teacher, caretaker, and remote worker all under the same roof. Add to the mix a president who calls for full-scale reopening, come what may. Keeping them out of school and keeping work closed is causing death also. Economic harm, but causing death. Districts are fearful of sick kids, sick teachers, and sick support staff. And all the while, state education budgets are being gutted the country over as tax revenues crater. Into this breach steps Secretary of Education Betsy DeVos, who some are accusing of playing partisan games with life and death education funding by floating a de facto national voucher plan once again. There are no words to express how outraged educators are and public school advocates are. The CARES Act provided $13.5 billion worth of stopgap funding for elementary and secondary schools. But some public school advocacy groups and education policy experts say Secretary DeVos is trying to take advantage of the pandemic to further her personal agenda of privatizing more of the education system. They're giving us a precious little uh, to work with. Thanks to Betsy DeVos, the little that's in there uh, is also to be shared with private schools in another attempt at vouchers. At a time when, when the public schools are very much in need, it's a little problematic to put money into private schools. The debate over school choice, as its supporters call it, or privatizing education, as its detractors would term it, has been a core tenant of Secretary DeVos's public life. Betsy DeVos has devoted a large portion of her adult life to pushing uh, for vouchers. Vouchers allow for state funding to be diverted away from public schools in favor of giving vouchers to parents that they can then use to send their kids to private or religious schools. I've always believed education funding should be tied to students, not systems, and that necessity has never been more evident. The language Secretary DeVos has used during the pandemic and the policy she's advocating smack of another attempt at nationalizing vouchers, according to some. We are dealing with uh, a Secretary of Education who has at her core a foundation of, of principles that says we shouldn't have public education. It should be an industry. It should be a for-profit business. And that she sees that as her job. She's really quite pleased with herself. And we are not. More recently, Secretary DeVos, who once called public schools a dead end, has attempted to divert yet more money away from public schools in favor of private ones. And while Congress did provide some latitude to help fund private schools that serve low-income students, DeVos may have overstepped her authority. Betsy DeVos decided that more money should go to private schools. Um, and so she set forth this rule that's pushing school districts to provide funding for private schools based on their overall enrollment, including affluent students, not just the enrollment of low-income students. In response to this, two lawsuits have been filed to block her actions, one spearheaded by the NAACP. The Department of Education declined an interview, but Angela Morabito, its press secretary, did respond to an email saying, this pandemic affected all students, and the CARES Act requires that funding should be used to help all students. There is no reasonable explanation for debating the use of federal funding to serve both public and private K-12 students. President Trump has said he supports something resembling a national voucher program in response to schools fearful of reopening amid a pandemic. If schools stay closed, the money should follow the students so families are in control of decisions about their sons and daughters. For those that oppose vouchers, though, this rhetoric and policy gets two things wrong. One, it diverts money away from already resource-strapped public schools. And two, ultimately, according to numerous academic studies, vouchers are ineffective at best. We've found that uh, they are not providing a benefit uh, overall on average for kids who would otherwise be in public school, particularly around math results, um, a, a decrease in achievement. We require a great deal of our public schools. There are so many different things that we ask our public schools to do, and we don't fund them anywhere near the level that they need. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. 
Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.